Hey there, it's David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and earlier this year in this series of videos that I've been doing every day for the year, that's the challenge, and I've found out that a lot of people aren't really interested in a new video every day, but that, you know, you live and learn, and you try and make it clear that that's what's going on. I've had some unsubscribes, people going, why do you send me a video every day? And I'm like, do you watch them? Do you know what I'm doing? They don't. And I get that now. You know, it's like, but you live and learn. All right. So earlier in the year, having said all that, earlier in the year, um, I did an AMA, an Ask Me Anything. Not American Medical Association, but Ask Me Anything, made famous on Reddit. And what I said was, hey, look, ask any questions you want about the business, about me, about performing, about acting on camera, about acting on mic. Uh, rehearsing, um, marketing, uh, productivity, anything you want. And uh, I thought, you know, it went really well. Uh, let's do it again. Let's see what we can come up with again. So you guys have been great. You've sent in a whole bunch of questions. Let's get right into them. Uh, Joseph Narducci says, I want to improve how I stay connected with clients. New ones and those I've worked with in the past, it's easy to work together and move on losing touch. I want to nurture the good relationships that were built from working together and in doing so, keep that door open for new opportunities. So my question for you, David, is how do you care for the working relationships you build with your clients? So I do that uh, with two different uh, avatars, two different audiences. I have my performance and voiceover clients that I do work for, that I voice audiobooks for, that I do commercials for, that I work on camera for, and so on. And when I do contact them, it's because I have kept them in a tickle file and I email them when they don't expect it with things that are useful, right? Um, you know, and, and also compliments on what they've done. So if I see a client um, in the news and I set up a tickle file and a Google News uh, alert for both. So if you have a client, say it's the ABC Corporation, Make sure you have them in your contact file and you know how to send to whomever you're going to send to. And also set up a Google News Alert for when they are going to be in the news. I have a client in, uh, in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, who is very active in the newsletter space. And in fact, I do an audio version of their newsletter for several of their clients. And I have a news alert set up for them so that I know when they're in the news. And when I see something that is worth complimenting them on or worth saying congratulations, I'll drop them a note. And that lies in a place with the, the other piece of advice that I have. And that is contact them when they don't expect it. You know, everybody sends out Christmas cards and, and you know... I guess, uh, you know, Arbor Day cards. I don't know. They, or they'll, they'll get somebody's birthday. They'll see them on Facebook and they'll inundate them. They'll, they'll say, hey, hey, uh, you know, I haven't been in touch, but hey, happy birthday, right? Instead of that, set yourself up to, to do this when they don't expect it, when nobody else is contacting them. And what you don't want to do is say anything along the lines of, hey, do you have any work for me? What you want to do is be helpful and friendly and um, concerned and um, empathetic and complimentary and just be normal and human, right? You don't have to be a salesman 100% of the time. If you do that, if you do that in a way that doesn't sound like you're trying to stay in touch, that's the trick, um, it can really be helpful. I've had people call me back out of the blue. They've been watching my videos or they've, and that's not aimed at them, right? Those are the, the, my videos that I'm doing here, they're not aimed at the clients that I do performance work for. They are aimed at the other audience that I, I said I had two. The other audience are my clients, my students, the people that I train, the people that I coach. And for them, the way I stay in touch is I am useful. I want to be as useful as I possibly can. And that's why these videos, that's why the uh, publicly available stuff on VOHeroes.com, um, the free getting started classes that I do, uh, when somebody has purchased from me, oh my gosh, I'll move heaven and earth to help them because they've shown me loyalty and I want to do the same in return. So those are the things. Create a tickle file. Uh, ask them what's going on when you contact them themselves. You know, hey, congratulations on that new client I saw you picked up. What else is going on with you? And send those messages when they don't expect it. Hope that helps.
Absolutely. Uh, another question. Christopher Buckner says, in your opinion, what is the single most important thing a person should know or do when starting their first podcast? Well, Christopher, you're one of my pros, and so I know that you have the podcasting classes available to you. What did you get from those podcasting classes as the first thing you should do? You don't want to worry about the equipment. You'll figure that out. That's a math problem. You don't have to worry about where you're going to house your podcasts again. That's a math problem. You're not going to have to worry about what you call it. You'll figure that out. The number one thing that people need to do that they just blow right by is clearly defining their avatar. Now, what do I mean by avatar? I have an avatar for these videos. My avatar for these videos is a working professional, not necessarily in the world of performance, but who wants to be in the world of performance. If they're already in the world of performance as a working professional, that's like icing on the cake. But I've found that most of my potential listeners, viewers, people that are in my sphere of influence are coming from some other place. They were doing something else and they decided they wanted to be in this business. I love when people who are in other categories of performance decide they want to add voiceover to what they're doing, but I also love it when people like you come from whatever you were doing to me, and I know that your podcast is gonna be about Dungeons and Dragons, so you want to identify very clearly who that avatar is. Is it people that are enthusiastic about D&D and are playing it already? Is it people that have never played it before and you're trying to introduce them to what's going on so you'll be explaining things? You want to very clearly identify who your target audience is, and that's called your avatar, your avatar. So I think that's a mistake that most people who put together any form of, of these videos, podcasts, uh, you know, series, web series, um, posts on Facebook, uh, set up groups on Facebook. They don't really know necessarily what their avatar is all about, what they want, what they need, what they're hungry for, what what concerns them, what keeps them up at night. You know, what is it about the D&D people that you're trying to meet, that you're trying to reach, that you want to help them with? So all of this stuff sort of comes from the idea of being of service. So again, the number one thing that I think people fly right by and that they should do more of is they should figure out who exactly their avatar is. And one little bonus be ready to pivot if who you've come up with as your avatar isn't really the people that are watching or listening to your podcast. Maybe you find out after the fact that you are talking more to Dungeon and Dragon Masters, the people that run the games, right? Uh, maybe your way of running the game becomes something that others can look at and go, oh, I didn't even think about doing that. Or, wow, that's really, that's really different. I want to figure that out. So you never know, right? When I originally started uh, VO Heroes, before it was called, when it was called VO to Gogo, it was because I had started making demos for people and it was called Demos to Gogo. And then I kind of pivoted because people also needed information about voiceover. So figure out your avatar. That's the number one thing. Great questions, everybody. There are more questions, so we're going to do another episode of this. I've got more questions coming down the pike. You guys have asked great questions. If you have uh, additional information for the questions that I'm answering, go ahead and put below the uh, uh, in the uh, um, in the comments area below this video. Uh, I'd love to know what you think of the answers that I've been giving. And if you'd like to be on my list to find out when these videos come out, again, once a day through the rest of the year, then we're going to drop back to once a week. And that way people will stop complaining that I send them videos every day. Um, go ahead and sign up. There's a little box that says get on the list. I'd love to have you. I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th. I thank you so much for watching, watching and for asking me anything. And I will talk to you tomorrow.